Coming up on Good Morning Texas, a look at how people remember September 11th. A UT student making an impact on the film community. And how Austin transformed into a celebration for the LGBTQ community. All this and more coming up on Good Morning Texas. Good Morning Texas, I'm Priscilla Patterson. And I'm Stephen Dow. With us here is our weather anchor, Christopher Adams. And our news anchor, Brenda Lau. Welcome, guys. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Today marks the 12 year anniversary of the 9 11 attacks that happened to the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, in Pennsylvania. USA Today reports there are, quote, a desensitization of Americans to the once scarring wounds. Tumble Down Trails Golf Course near Madison, Wisconsin, is promoting a 12 year anniversary special. For a nine round golf game, the price is $9.11, and for an 18 round golf game, the price is $19.11. New York has recovered and is coming out even stronger from this travesty. This is the first time that we'll see the Freedom Tower during the anniversary of 9-11. And with today being the 12th anniversary, rem remember where we were on September 11th. Stephen, do you remember where you were on September 11th? Yeah, I think I was like, what, in second grade or third grade? And like, I didn't know what's happening, like people were just leaving class because like their parents were coming to pick them up so I thought like you know like hey you know I get to go home early today but like that was not the case I just like was one of the people who just stayed there the whole day and like I didn't find out about it until like that evening. Wonderful. How about you? Um, I was at school and my father picked me up and let me know. Christopher? I was actually still in England at the time so um you know I just got home from school when I found the news and it was obviously not quite as big of a deal of a there as it was here but still just you'll never forget it will you and the big news this morning president obama spoke to the u.s last night to address concerns over going to war with syria the 16-minute speech addressed both negative public opinion and the u.s's responsibility in global politics in his speech obama said quote let me make something clear the united states military doesn't do pin pricks ever even a limited strike will send a message to assad that no other nation can deliver Military enlisting have increased since the start of the war on terror. Football player Nate Boyer enlisted in the National Guard while still a student at the University of Texas. This past summer, he spent the, the summer in Afghanistan. When asked how it is to adjust to playing football in school after spending it in Afghanistan, Boyer said, quote, they are similar in a way football is the closest sport to combat than any other sport I can think of in the United States. You have to watch everybody's back, but it's definitely not war. I have to definitely agree with Nate Boyer on his quote. I remember once when I was in the Longhorn Band here at the university, I was on the field and a football player came in front of me and it was the scariest moment of my life. So I definitely can see how Nate Boyer drew the correlation between football and the front line. How about you and Brenda? Uh, you know, I can definitely see it just the same thing. I one time was like close to the field and I saw the players run real close and I thought, oh my goodness. You know, I was watching football with my roommate the other night and she goes, I would die. Yeah, <laughs> I would die if you know, I got tired. And we actually spoke with another UT student who served time, uh, this time in the Marines. Her name is Jennifer Brofer and this week's Student Spotlight, we get a look into her passions and aspirations. Take a look. served time in the Marines while doing something she loves. Before I came to UT, I was a Marine Corps combat correspondent for 10 years. So basically I did video production and journalism and broadcasting for the Marine Corps in the United States and abroad in Afghanistan. Since becoming a student, Brofar has found ways to not only keep up with the Marines, but also pursue her dreams of becoming a filmmaker. I first heard about the Oscar Experience College Search in an article online. So, and it basically said they were looking for film students to submit a 30 second video explaining what they would contribute to the future of film. Hi, my name is Jennifer Brofer, and what I will contribute to the future of film is honor, courage, and commitment. So they had 1,100 entries for the Oscar Experience College Search, and they selected six students from around the country, and I was one of those lucky six. And just like that, she was chosen to present award statues at last year's Academy Awards an experience she says was unreal. 
they treated us really well. They gave us a tour of the Academy. We got to meet the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. We got to meet uh, tons of celebrities uh, for rehearsals. And it was busy, 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 but come Oscar night, it was just, it was awesome and it flowed really smoothly. Ambrofer is glad that she has taken her time to complete schooling. She says the wisdom gained over the years gives her perspective. Being a little bit older as a student, I think I can appreciate higher education more than when I was first starting out when I was 18. Keen Gas, Good Morning Texas. It amazes me that there's so many people in the military and it's just changed their lives. Yeah, I definitely agree. The military has provided so many opportunities. I mean, we've seen it with Nate Boyer. We've seen it with um, Jennifer Brofer right here. So I think it's really amazing. Um, and when we come back, we take a look at Austin Pride. And rain chances in your forecast once again. I'll have the details coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back. And now for your local Austin news, Brenda Lau. Brenda? Thanks, girl. So the Armstrong Lie, that's the title of the new documentary in which Armstrong opens up about his seven dubbed Tour de France titles and living a lie. It is a tale of two films that was supposed to, be, uh, to begin as the anticipated comeback of the hero amongst allegations of drug abuse. Armstrong says in the film, I didn't live a lot of lies, but I lived one big one. Now on your Texas judge's or, uh, order, he will now testify under oath about how exactly he cheated. The film directed by Alex Gibney is set to be released in November. Go big or go home, or at least that's how we do it in Texas. For the third year in a row, Texas has been named the top state for doing business by Area Development Magazine. States are ranked based on 17 different categories in which Texas topped many of them and continue to dominate in the category of job creation and economic prosperity. The Lone Star State has also been awarded the best state for business for nine years in a row, which continues a decade-long trend of awards and recognitions. Barton Springs will be in the process of having a series of ground improvements starting this October. Improvements include updating outdated equipment and resources, replacing the gravel in the parking lots, creating an accessible path for those with disabilities and make the park more accessible. During construction, the park will be minimally affected, although a gate may be closed to permit construction workers to work. The new facelift is expected to be completed in the spring of 2014. And this past weekend, Austin played to the annual Pride Parade and Festival. Key and Gas shows us the details. The Austin Pride Festival and Parade occurred this past Saturday. The festival took place in the day at the Fiesta Gardens in Lady Bird Lake. Among the festivities were performances from local and recognized drag queens, burlesque performers, and singers. And even though the Texas heat came out in full force, that didn't stop people from enjoying the fun. You know, it's so hot, I was going to say, but I'm sweating like a <laughs> on church. But my church I go to is air conditioning, so I don't know what you're going to do. I'm sweating like a <laughs> in Austin, Texas. That's what's going on. Throughout the festival, performers spoke about the current state of gay, lesbian, and transgender affairs while performing to their core audience. Though equal rights have become more commonplace around the world, performers and festival goers alike felt the vitality of the Pride Festival. People like um, that live in the city of Austin, we are lucky because we do have a lot of rights here and we have a lot of support. But as you've seen today, there's even people who are against us, uh, the religious right, people who don't understand, who want to ban us and wish us mean things. So uh, it's important that we always stand together, and not just one day a year, but 365 days a year. And the timing of Austin Pride couldn't come at a better time. Austin Pride also celebrated San Antonio's passing of a bill that would ban the discrimination of LGBTQ individuals. Festival goers were vocal about their support. I think we, I need to get down to San Antonio and check it out. They're really uh, coming along down there. I want to check out the gay pride stuff down there, too. Key and Gas, Good Morning, Texas. Wow, that's been really interesting to see Austin, you know, come together for, you know, such a big event. Yeah, I definitely think it's truly amazing, especially with the anti-discrimination law just passed in San Antonio, mm -hmm. which I'd like to note was the last major city in Texas to pass this law. So it was truly groundbreaking. It was. 
And, you know, it was really a hot day Saturday. Christopher, what do we have to look forward to this week? We've actually got more of the same, I'm afraid. Hot and dry for most of the days. Time check for you, it is 7.24 right now on this Wednesday morning. 75 degrees out there in the Austin area, and we'll top out right around 95 this afternoon. Those triple digit days, though, good news, have finally gone for the from the forecast, will remain in the mid to upper 90s throughout the rest of the work week. We do have about a 10% chance of showers on uh, maybe even some storms in the area once again this afternoon, uh, but we will keep our fingers crossed that they make the, their way here into the 40 acres. Uh, we've got plentiful sunshine Thursday through Saturday, and the football game looks like it's going to be hot 96 degrees as you're out there tailgating and then remaining in the low 90s to mid 80s throughout the rest of the game. We are expecting some change by Sunday, though. We're actually keeping an eye out on the tropics for some potential development. That way, there is a system uh, in the far western Caribbean Sea right now could potentially move our way, according to the National Hurricane Center and some of the computer models there. Uh, this does have about a 70% chance that it'll develop into a tropical storm, so we will certainly keep our fingers crossed that it moves our way. We've put in about a 30% chance of rain on Sunday and then up to a 40% on Monday, but unfortunately it looks like uh, the system will uh, steer further south down into parts of Mexico, but we can always hope that it does make its way towards us here in central Texas. Today, though, hot and sunny, 95 degrees, but do watch out for that chance of a shower or two later on this afternoon. Thank you so much, Christopher. And stay tuned for some more tips from Christopher on how to stay cool during these remaining hot days. Well, it looks like the 100 degree temperatures are gone for now, but it's still very hot right here in Austin, Texas. So Christopher, when we're out there in the Austin weather, how can we keep safe? Well, there's a lot of things to bear in mind. Um, we are, although the tri triple digit temperatures have gone from the area, we're still in the mid to upper 90s. When we factor in the humidity, it still feels up to 100 degrees out there. So the heat is actually a pretty important thing to keep in mind of when you're outside. And the heat itself can be quite dangerous, right? That is right. Heat is actually the number one weather-related killer here in the United States. And I think that's something that kind of surprises people. You think of, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes. Uh, but heat actually kills, on average, more people than flooding, tornadoes, and hurricanes combined. So it is something, you know, important to bear in mind. When there is excessive heat out there, the National Weather Service does issue those watches and warnings. So when one of those is out for our area, it is important to, you know, bear that in mind and take some steps, slow down, keep yourself cool. So as we know, it can be super hot here in Austin, and it was very hot during the first football game. So coming up on our second football game this Saturday, what are some tips to stay safe? Well, drink plenty of fluids, obviously. A lot of the things are kind of common sense. Water is, of course, best. Uh, try to drink water even when you're not feeling thirsty, because when you're out in the heat and you're sweating a lot, your body is losing lots of water. So it's important to kind of, you know, replenish that so you you uh, your body retains the water that it needs. Also, uh, wear lightweight, uh, light-colored clothing. White-colored uh, cl white clothing really is best because it, you know, reflects the heat. If you're wearing darker clothing, you absorb that heat in, so you feel a lot hotter. So no wearing black this weekend. Exactly. <laughs> Burnt orange and white. There you go. <laughs> So I have like quite a few friends who like to tan and get bronze. Do you have any tips for them for lying in the sun? Yes, the number one thing is just, you know, do it in moderation. Uh, if you're outside, use sunscreen, SPF 15 at least. That's a good tip for really anyone who's going to be outside. And uh, also, just use your common sense. If you start to feel too hot, come inside to the uh, air conditioning. Just allow yourself to cool down for a little while. Wonderful. So I am so tired about walking around campus and sweat just dripping down my body. <laughs> Is there any relief that we see in the forecast? We do have some rain coming up maybe this weekend. Hopefully that will come about. Stay tuned for an exclusive look at the ridiculous obstacle challenge that Steven and I completed this weekend. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now Steven and I will take you on an exclusive look at the Ridiculous Obstacle Challenge, which we comp completed this weekend. Good morning, Texas. Today we're here at the ROC race, which for some of y'all who don't know, stands for Ridiculous Obstacle Challenge. Right now, we're going to show you some of the crazy obstacles we have in store for us. So come with us along on our journey. It's going to be exciting. 
exciting. Three, two, one. Get out there and make it happen, y'all. I love you. I love what's happening here. It's the beginning of the race. Steven, how are you feeling? Does anybody have a band aid? All I have to say is no, ma'am. And there he goes. He's off. And my turn now. As you can see, it's pretty crazy in here. Good morning, Texas. That was the second obstacle that we've completed. And as you can see by the sweat just dripping off of me, it's already so crazy. Come with me on the rest of the journey. I don't know how I'm going to make it. So there's a long haul up here, y'all. You know, it's been a pretty big race. Steven, what do you think? You know, I think it's been pretty, pretty fun, but pretty challenging also. Yes. We're almost at the end, or maybe halfway. Oh, it's been really exciting. You guys are all doing a fantastic job. Let's keep smiling, laughing, having fun. That's what we're all about today. So, good morning, Texas. We're halfway done. See behind me, we're about to go to the hardest part of the race, which is the biggest water inflatable. It's the inflatable over here. So, come with us. We're about to finish the race. Here we go. Definitely one of the highlights of my weekend, and I'm so glad we were able to experience that together. I'm actually kind of embarrassed to say that I was a bit sore like the day after. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in with us, and we hope that you have a wonderful Wednesday.